Good afternoon, my lovely friends. How are you all today? It's Dr. Sally Grad and the Life Balance Doctor here. And um, I thought I'd come and say hello and have a chat about morning routines. Morning routines is something that I always roll my eyes at a little bit and never really got into until about a year ago now, I think it was. Um, maybe a bit longer, actually. And somebody introduced me to uh, something called The Miracle Morning, which is a book by um, a guy called Hal Elrod. And in it, he talks about his version of a morning routine um, and involves a whole series of different things that he does, none of which take him more than about five minutes for each section. And I started following it and I followed it religiously and it made the world of difference to me and over time I've adapted it I've changed it and I've made it really work for me and the things that I do now uh, which I'll tell you about a little bit in a minute they set me up for my whole day and the days when I haven't done it I am a grumpy <laughs> grumpy grumpy woman <laughs> and I really notice the difference in my mood and how I am with my children, with my husband, just generally how my day goes. It's not pretty, to be honest. And so it's something that I would really encourage all of you to consider starting some sort of morning routine that works for you. And everybody's different. There are certain things that I would really encourage you to include because I think they're particularly important. But then there are also things which you might want to add in or take out that they are important or not so important for you, your needs, the way your life runs, because at the end of the day, we're not carbon copies of each other. We're all individuals. So the, the things that I do that are pretty non-negotiable if I want to have a smooth sailing day, <laughs> I, I get up early in the morning and this is just my choice. I've got very young children and the way for me to beat them out of bed in the morning <laughs> is to get up about 4.30 in the morning. Now, that's not for everybody, and I know that there'll be a whole load of people having sort of panic attacks, um, <laughs> hearing that maybe they need to do the same, and you don't. If that doesn't work for you, don't do that. Do it whenever suits you. You, know, heck, you could do this at 10 o'clock in the morning if you wanted to. I like the early morning because it's peaceful, it's calm, it's quiet, it's... Mm. It's solitude for me. It's that one time of the day before my children get up and start running around and wanting things <laughs> and before I have to start with my work or with whatever else I'm doing that day, it's time that is purely solely for me. The house is quiet, the dogs are sleeping. <laughs> it's just nice. It, it's well, There's something special about that time of the morning for me. And... Yeah, I've got added bonus, so I get to watch the sunset most days, which is pretty magical. Anyway, so I would recommend getting up half an hour earlier than you normally do to do this. And that's all it needs to be, just half an hour earlier than your normal waking up time so that you can you can beat everybody else. <laughs> and and I'd say that that's all it needs to be, half an hour, which really is not that much in the grand scheme of things. Not for a smooth running day anyway. And I, the things I do that particularly work well for me are I meditate and my, I do different meditations depending on my mood. So some of them, sometimes I do guided med meditations, sometimes I do meta, um, meta meditations, um, loving kindness or, oh gosh, all sorts. What else do I do? Um, sometimes I simply sit in silence and just let my thoughts wash in and out without judging any of them and just just sit. Um, sometimes I might sit and watch a candle flickering. You know, there are so many ways to meditate and there's no right or wrong way. They're just, it's whatever feels good and works well for you. Um, I write my gratitude list. I write three things that I'm grateful for. And I make sure, I've said this before, but I always make sure that I include something that's really, really simple. So something like the smile of my um, my daughter's face or something that takes it back, 
takes it right back down and I make sure that I really feel into it and feel the gratitude and feel feel how I feel when that thing is happening or when I see my daughter smile or when I see that beautiful flower sort of shining out at me and I really internalize that feeling and it allows me to carry that feeling with me for the rest of the day um what else do I do when I remember which isn't always <laughs> I visualize how I'd like my day to go and it's really simple it's just letting thoughts and images run through of how of how I'd like my day to pan out, the things I want to happen, the things I want to get done, the way I want to feel, um, and just enjoy it, really. Um, and what else do I do? Oh, I'm forgetting. Ah, oh, journaling. I, I journal. Um, it's something which it's taken me a while to get into, and I, I, it took me a while to understand how to really do it and what would work for me, but now it's, comp it's, it's invaluable to me. And I have learned so much from taking the time to journal every day. And yeah, I say every day. There are times when I miss it and there are times when I do none of these things. There are times when I only do a few of these things. And I have learned not to beat myself up over when I do or don't do it. I go with the flow. If I do it, then great. And if I don't, then, well, as I say, sometimes I'll really, really notice it and realise realise that I've been getting grumpier and grumpier and realise I haven't done these for a few days and I've let it slide a bit and then I'll get back on it again and it will all be good again. So, but with my journaling, I tend to just free flow, write. So after my meditation, I will just put pen to paper and let my hand wander across the page, basically. Um, and not worry about what I'm writing, what I'm saying. It's literally what comes into my head and down my arm, into my hand as I'm sat there. And it's a pretty magical experience because so often what comes out onto the paper is very deep, very profound and incredibly insightful and gets to the heart of your worries, your excitements, your joys, your fears. It really cuts through all those layers and cuts to that unconscious sub -layer. And it's a really powerful exercise. So I do that. I also um, normally pull an oracle card or an affirmation card or something like that because, again, I find that it really helps bring things to the surface and gets me thinking about things in a slightly different way and approach them from a slightly different angle. And I have some beautiful, beautiful cards that I adore using because they are all so positive and uplifting and they always seem to give me what I need that day. So... Um, what else do I do? Sometimes I will read. Um, I'll read books that help me grow as a person, that uplift me, make me feel good, or just teach me something. Um, what else do I do? I Oh, I write my affirmations. And I'll say them out loud. And uh, let me think, what else is there? I think that's it. The only other thing is exercise. And the thing with exercise is it doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be grand, it doesn't have to be an hour-long, super sweaty workout in the gym. It can be something a lot more gentle, a lot more personal and quiet and relaxed. And yoga is one of the things that I, I love doing because it helps centre me and brings me back into my body and helps get my head out of the clouds and woo up here and I'm and, and back and centred and grounded which is something that personally I, I need. So yoga is one of my go-tos um, or or another uh, an exercise or set of exercises that I do sometimes that I enjoy. Hi <laughs> <Yeah>. Milo. <laughs> I'll get you some in a minute buddy. My son's come upstairs <laughs> with a packet of frozen cheese. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, so you've got it. You've got it. Right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> so anyway, that that this has been a, a bit of a longer video, so I'll leave it there. And if you've got any questions, then feel free to post them and ask me about it, and I'll, I'll happily expand on any of them. And perhaps in the future, I'll talk in a little bit more detail about all of these different things that I do and that I've seen work for so many other people. As I say when we 
give so much of ourselves to other people. It is so important that we take some time for ourselves, some time to be by ourselves. Jeez. Jeez. Um, <laughs> Hello, bud. <laughs> and to be, to find that peace that we, that is very often lacking from the rest of our day as we rush around being busy being mothers and trying to do our work and, and fit everything in. <clears throat> so, enjoy it. The point of this is, is to enjoy it. It's not to put pressure on you or yourself to, to fit even more into your day. It's not about that. It's about giving yourself some space, which then actually you will find provides you with more time during the rest of your day as you go about your day in a more relaxed way. You'll be less stressed. And I find that when I've done this, I'm more productive, I'm more centred, I'm more focused. And I'm also able to be more present with my children because I've had the time I needed for myself. Baby. 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 Okay. Hang on a minute. Baby. So, Baby. so <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I'd better go before he um does something. But anyway, um, I will be back again tomorrow. And... Um, I hope you found this useful. So please comment if you've got any questions about any of it, and I'll have any for you, everybody. Hang on, Dee. Hopefully, I will see you all in my lovely, lovely new group. It's full of absolutely beautiful souls, and it is an absolute joy to be in there. Like so please come and join us. There's a link in the description, and. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.